Victor. Yeah, she's gonna kind of introduce everyone else, let you guys know what's going on. All right, so thank you so much for being here. It's about 10 after, and we have literally 15 minutes of stuff. So we want to get started as people filter, and we'll try to get them the material. Um, Dr. Heidi Larson, I teach here at Eastern, and part of the benefits of being a professor is you earn a sabbatical if you're here long enough, and my sabbatical was to create a mentoring program in a local high school. That's what I chose to do. Some people tour Europe, and I decided we're going to help young people. Who, um, I have four graduate students who are here to present along with me. They'll each have part of the presentation, and they are intimately implementing the bionic program this year at Mattoon High School. Last year was our pilot first year. You know, there's lots of bumps and kinks to work out, and so we'll talk a little bit about what the preliminary data is, our objectives, as well as we have three video clips we want you to hear from teachers, the juniors and seniors, and then EIU came over and said, let me see if I can conceptualize what's really happening and kind of deliver that in a five-minute video. So to go ahead and get started, I was at a national conference in um, uh, Minneapolis, and a woman, Sandy, was there to present uh, this bionic program, and she's from a small town in Colorado, and they had three concurrent suicides. And she said, something's happening in my high school, and we need to do something about this. And what she found out is there were subsets of students that their needs were not being met, and so she creates this program called Bionic. So what we did is a needs assessment at Mattoon High School and said, what do they need in order to help meet their pockets of students who are maybe struggling in ways that are different than the traditional student? Um, so the benefits that we wanted to implement, the administration, myself, and one of the school counselors, was um, to help gain leadership skills. So teaching young people, and when you challenge them with a mission, they can take it on and they can do amazing things. How can they be good leaders um, was number one. Number two was we wanted to take initiative when there's difficult things happening in a school. My favorite story this year, um, Michelle Sinclair, the principal, texted me. She's like, you're going to love this. It's really happening. It's working outside of our four walls. Two young students, football players, were diagnosed with cancer in a local school, and a group of our students went over and talked to those boys and um, just offered support without anyone asking them to do that. That's what the initiative we're looking for. That's the kind of care we want to show. And the next one says, um, execute a necessary course of action when a fellow student's in need. And we're going to talk a little bit about our grief team because when someone says, oh, I lost someone important to me, our juniors and seniors are saying, we know how to handle that. We know how to refer that student. Someone needs extra help. Um, in the school. The last three benefits we're looking at is how do we collaborate, how do we cooperate as a community? Because a school itself can't do it all. So we needed Mattoon as a community to get involved in some of the, um, the Rotary, um, the Kiwanis, those leaders are coming involved, they're helping. In addition to that, we wanted to bridge the university to a high school. So myself as the professor from the university, and then we have um, a group of graduate students helping implement it, because you need people power when you come up with a program of this size. In addition to that, we wanted to help negate some of the negative behaviors that happens in a school building. Thus, we're talking about bullying as an overarching theme here today. But when you create a, col a climate or a community where people really feel that they're cared about, that helps change some of the behaviors. And so what we're going to show you on the data is the negative behaviors like expulsion, problems, um, disciplinary problems have gone down with our freshman class compared to the eighth grade data that we received. And that's really, really important um, preliminary. We're collecting data this year. It's our second year through to see how are things going. Um, in addition to that, we want to make a difference. We want students to realize that at a young age of 16, 17, you can make a difference in someone's life. And we want to empower them to be able to do that to create change. And Graduate students, myself, the administration, the teachers, they're all showing them how to do that. And now the freshmen are sort of getting some impact from the upperclassmen showing that they actually care about them as well. All right. It's all you, Grace. If you want to introduce yourself sure. as well, I thought that would be easiest. Just to add the teacher recommendation, what we did is we sent all the teachers a list of all the juniors and seniors in the building. It's about a thousand school students, approximately a thousand students in the building. So last year when we started it, you needed two teacher recommendations to be a freshman mentor. This year you had to have between 10 and 12. That just speaks to the volume of teacher buy-in, right? And that's what helps make it so successful.
Leadership Training Institute that takes place during the summer. Um, and it's really fun, we were all a part of it, but um, they, we do some team building exercises to open up. And then there's also an educational element that covers six different topics um, that include the following. So we've got the having, or having character, effective communication, um, the, sorry, I'm spacing. <laughs> then we have um, having, uh, so we've got, you can read them, sorry. There's a six up there, but that's having character, effective communication, be, um, being a dedicated leader, courage, growing empathy, and building a vision. And so those are all six components that we felt as leaders would be um, important for the Bionic team uh, students to have a little bit more insight into. So, and those were done through presentations that took place during the summer. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we invited community members as keynote speakers. So the CEO of Sarah Bush Hospital came, um, we had an EIU um, past president, Lou Hankin, came. We had the um, man who runs the YMCA, he's just changed Matt Toon's small YMCA to amazing. We wanted them to know, here's what leaders are doing, and they're tidbits of wisdom. Why recreate the wheel when they could come in and show you and give you just a nugget that you could take with you. So each day that they're there, there's a keynote speaker who comes in to sort of motivate and implement um, how to become a leader. And so there are four teams that are underneath the large bionic umbrella and students get an opportunity to be a part of more than one team if they choose to, but the four teams are the freshman mentoring team, the transfer team, the extended absence team, and then the group team. So we're gonna start with the freshman mentoring team. Um, and so the freshman mentoring team has approximately 50 students, or 50 mentee, mentors that ment mentor the entire freshman class, which is a pretty big population, but they do a fantastic job. Um, so when the freshmen first come into the building, they open up their lockers and they see that there is a little welcome gift in their locker for them to kind of get them to a, a nice start to their high school experience. And the welcome package can include a lanyard, which I'm wearing now. So. <laughs> 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 Got a little lanyard. Um, there is also a welcome card and there's a pencil, candy mug. It can vary, but we like to give them a little introduction, introductory gift. Um, they also get shown around the school. They get to figure out where the gym is. They get to figure out like the whole lunchroom. And a really big component of the freshman mentoring program is that for the first two weeks, every day during lunch, the mentees meet with their assigned mentor and they go through a specialized curriculum that's been created to kind of get them, it's part educational, part fun. We kind of, we do our best to kind of vary, um, to jump in between those two aspects. Um, an example of an educational thing that they learn during the 10 or 15 minutes prior to them going to the lunchroom is they learn how to log into Skyward. And Skyward, then they get to be able, once they log into Skyward, they get to learn how to look at their grades, which is awesome because then it helps them kind of keep tabs on their academic progress, what they're missing, what they need help with, et cetera. And then a fun one that we actually just did, I believe it was last week during homecoming week, is we had all of the mentees design their mentor. They got to decorate their mentors with streamers and toilet paper <laughs> and newspaper and pipe cleaners. It was awesome. They had a really great time doing that. And it was really great to see like how the teams built within the overall freshman class. So for the first two weeks, going back to that, the first two weeks they meet every single day during lunch and they meet with their fellow classmates and then they also get to meet with their mentor, just build some rapport and build relationships. So they go down to the, the lunch room and they sit with them at their assigned table. First two weeks every single day. Once the first two weeks pass, they meet every Thursday and they go through the curriculum. And the, um, the good thing is that we try to do is that the mentors are given the curriculum in advance. So we have a monthly meeting and we go through the month's worth of curriculum so they have a little bit of prior insight so they can explain it better to their mentees. Um, but the, we, they go through the curriculum during the first 10 or 15 minutes of lunch and then they go down to the lunchroom, sit at their assigned tables and just get to know each other and have fun. So that is there's a ratio one to one on Oh, good question. Oh, that's a good question. Um, the ratio is actually, right now I believe it is five to one. Um, so there, yeah, for one ment for every mentor, there's about five to six students that they work with, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in January, we reshuffle. So it's a really stressful time because lunch changes. Mm -hmm. So we were worried last year, like, oh, we didn't think about this. How can we keep the mentors having a lunch and the same freshmen having a lunch? We realized there's no way we could do that. And so the shuffle actually was a blessing in disguise. So they get a new mentor come January, and it actually worked out great. Because if you didn't like your mentor, whether it was a personality or they weren't in the right click, or what, they got a new chance. And so that was um, a really important part of um, 
the process last year. All right, so the extended absence is me. Um, Rebecca Miller is the young lady who helps implement this particular team um, at Mattoon High School. And what we realize is students who miss more than three days struggle when they come back. You know, thinking back three days, I've missed algebra, geometry, I'm struggling. And so what we wanted to do is if you miss more than three days, and again, this comes from the secretaries, um, we actually collect your homework, call home, and what we implemented this year that was different than last year is the mentors, we want them to make the call. Hi, Johnny, we know you've been gone for five days. We just want you to know you're missed. Um, we have your homework collected. We got anything that you needed from school be in the office. I um, mean, that's been really important because if you know that someone cares that you've been out in like the flu, right? You could miss four or five days if you get a nasty flu. Um, in addition to that, we had a, an accident last year with three students who were significantly hurt in a car accident, young boys, and they were at the Sarah Bush Hospital and we went and visited them. <laughs> so we cut, um, it, was, it was moving and along with one young man, he had surgery, he was bedridden and so there was this really narrow staircase and you kind of go up there well, there's seven of us so we're kind of going up these stairs we get in and he just starts crying he's like I had no idea anyone cared that I wasn't at school and so this is about getting your homework and we want to catch you up but it's also when you're not in the building your presence is missed and that's the important part about caring um, in addition to that, there's PALS. We changed the name this year, Peer Academic Lounge for Students. We wanted um, students who need tutoring some help to have a space to do that. So two days a week, Tuesday and Thursdays after school, or seventh hour, um, they could come and get some tutoring. We're still retooling that because some of the kids who need it the most aren't using the service. And so how do we maximize the gift of um, getting kids who need some extra help, extra help? So that's in addition to the extended absence. The, Michelle and I, the principal, so we decided at the beginning of the school year, you can imagine this, like how much money do we have, how many pies do we need, so we bought 30 starting in August, and we're like, we're good, we're good for the year, because ne no one had a pulse of how much loss is in a school building, and so what happened is come the end of September, they were gone, and we're like, oh my gosh, we didn't realize how many pies that we actually needed, and the loss can be a student, a staff, the janitor, the school nurse, we went and saw her, it doesn't matter who you are in the building, Anybody and everybody qualifies. And so the permission is, we want five minutes. We're not coming in your house. We don't want to stay. We just want you to know. Um, this is through market day, so the, the funds kind of go back to the schools. You purchase those pies. They're frozen, so the families can use them when they want. But the most important part, this, this one teacher, um, he was there, and Michelle, a group of us last year, went to the, the door. We were saying we're sorry to hear about it. he lost his father. And um, he was just so moved. He's like, I can't believe my students served me. When I look out on my porch, there you are. There's a group of nine of you who gave up your Monday night and everybody's time has value. You gave up your Monday night and you came to see us. It didn't matter if it was raining, if it snowed, we went twice a month and that was the day we were going and we just asked permission before we go. Um, and it's been an incredibly moving um, experience. And the first pie delivery I did in August, this young lady, she's a junior, I know her outside of school, her parents were, um, were friends with her parents and she said, um, Dr. Larson, I've always wanted to be a good person. I've always wanted to do really good things. I just didn't know how. 
I didn't know how to do that. And I feel better about who I am. And this young lady, her parents have been struggling with confidence. And if, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to help someone feel better, increase their self-esteem. It takes a long time. It's, a, it's hard work. But serving others is the altruism, right? I mean, that's when you start getting that payback. Um, and it was a really touching experience to have with her. Okay, I'm Deb German. I am part of the transfer team. Um, so far we have, we have about 25 mentors on our team. And since the beginning of the school year and until now, we have had about 35 transfer students come in. And when the new students come in, so it could have been like last week, could have been the first week, first, or last week of August, they receive a mug that has uh, candy in it, a pencil, a lanyard, and they get a card that's signed by everyone on the transfer team. Um, so the first two days that they arrive at Matthew High School, they're shown around the school by their mentor. So they get to see how their lockers work, meet their teachers, see where all their classrooms are, and how they teach each other, figure out how the lunch line works. But I'm sure all schools have like a little different system, and figure out like the procedures for gym and changing and stuff like that. Um, the transfer team meets every month, and then at the, end, the last Friday of every month, we have a pizza luncheon, and the mentors invite all their transfer students, and we play music, and we have games and icebreakers, and it gives all the, the transfer students an opportunity to meet other transfer students and meet other mentors. So they're only paired with, that is a one-to-one -one ratio, so each, or I guess a mentor could have multiple students depending on when they come in throughout the school year. Um, but it gives the transfer students opportunities to meet other students. This team was picked when we did the needs assessment. We picked transfer team. Um, I don't know if this happens in your building, but people move from Charleston over to Mattoon. The yoga kids come up to Mattoon. I mean, there's a lot of movement and shifting in the high school. Um, and the graduation rate for Mattoon is around 92% graduation. When you look at just transfer students, it's 67% graduate. It's really low. I don't know if you've looked at your school, what number it is. And so we said, what can we do? How do we help them feel acclimated and connected to this school building? And one of the easiest ways is give them an upperclassman. Because then they all of a sudden get invested and involved in school, get them a sport, an extracurricular activity, and a couple friends, someone that they connect with. And we want the luncheons to go the whole year. Some of them don't come. They, they come in September and then they don't want to come back because they've met friends connected. But it's always an opportunity. They can come to November's luncheon, December, they're going to have it in January, just a free lunch. And we ask the teachers who are associated with this team to come. We want the teachers there, the mentors, us, so that there's some interaction amongst those kids. And we showed this to the new group this year. We wanted them to hear what mentors thought about last year's experience. Oops. Let's see if I can go back. Oh, I don't want that either. I didn't, yeah, I didn't check the volume. Let's see what's going on here. Really? Oh, wow, that's a bad sign. I don't see where the volume is, though. Is it on? Can we look at the Do you want to show me how to do that? Sorry, we did not check this. And these are both juniors and seniors. Is that loud enough?
there's a couple students in there who um, were making some poor choices um, as sophomores, and we were worried about them as at the school. And so when they wanted to be bionic, we're like, oh, we don't know. Life changing. They are different kids making better choices because there's a little sheet that they have to sign about being a good role model, making wise choices. If you're going to lead others, the expectation for you is a little bit higher. Um, and it's just been fun as when we re present it to the faculty, they're like, I can't believe that's Susie. I can't believe that's Michael, um, as they heard them speak about being a mentor. So I'm Julie Novak, and I am working with the freshman mentoring team this year with Grace. And I'm just going to talk about the data a little bit. I'm going to do this quick so we get to the other videos. Um, we give the mentees and the mentors um, surveys. We try and do one in the fall, one in the winter, and then one at the end of the year. Um, for the freshman mentees, they are given eight questions based on a Likert scale. One is definitely no, I don't agree. Five is yes, I agree wholeheartedly. And then they are given um, six free response type questions on the back. Anything else you want us to know? So the first, one of the questions we've given examples of a couple. Um, the question is, do you feel supported and encouraged by your mentor? So in order to do this, we grouped four and five together as yes, one and two together as no, and three is just kind of a different neutral. So for this question, 67% of students said yes, I feel supported by my mentor. I feel like they care about me as a person. Our next question is, do you believe freshman mentoring has created a positive school climate? So do you feel safe when you're at school? Do you feel a part of the Mattoon Green Wave community? Do you feel like you are involved and accepted? And 39% said that they felt indifferent, while 33% said yes. So when we look at that, we think, okay, well, how can we improve the school climate? Because we want it to be at least 50% saying yes, I agree. And some of the students said, I don't need new friends. That's what they thought. Like, is this, are you trying to make me have new friends? I don't need new friends. I got friends as freshmen. Um, so their interpretation is hard to capture as well, right, when they read the question. Another question is, has mentoring helped you become more part of MHS and be more involved? So some of the curriculum we have is letting them know about sports and clubs and activities that they can be a part of as freshmen and continue on through their four years. 38% said yes, 31% said no, so it was kind of um, equivalent between the three, but there was more who agreed, yes, I now know about more sports and clubs that I can be a part of. It was the highest turnout for freshmen on record at Mattoon High School. They created a second play for just freshmen, highest freshmen in football and other uh, sports that they've had ever. And part of it is they just don't know what there is to offer at the school. And so the curriculum was go through these programs, tell the students what there is, talk to them. Um, one of my favorite parts is some of the juniors and seniors went to the freshman game and some of the freshmen went to their games um, just to support each other. Like, I saw you up there in the stands. I saw you watching my game. How more empowering could that be that someone who cares really shows it by coming? And with that, it's also helpful if your mentor, um, a lot of the male mentors we have this year are on the football team. So if they're talking it up in other activities, um, the mentees are probably, if they have that strong connection with their mentor, going to want to join the activities to, to have more privilege. Um, so the next question was asking if the mentor provided a strong leadership style and if it was a supportive leadership. The interesting part about the mentor data, their scores went down with leadership ability. So they rated themselves higher than they really thought that they could lead well. And what they said is, Dr. Larson, this is a lot harder than being the captain of the soccer team. This is a lot harder than being NHS president. So being able to lead five or six students if you're on the freshman team who may or may not want to be there, who sometimes are like you and sometimes not like you. So the importance of training how to become a leader is really important. That's what they really wanted. We have a second group for just the team leaders that so we'll, if we get some time we'll talk about, that they get to go to a group just to continue to develop their skills as being a leader of each of the teams. Okay, well, what happened? What was not working mentoring? Because that's the positive trend that we want to see. 
The only new thing that happened to Mattoon High School last year was Bionic. There was no other um, program. Sometimes schools have two or three things that are kind of going on at the same time. Um, so the principal attributes this attendance to freshmen feeling like they have at least one friend, one connection. When we contacted the middle school and said, tell us the attendance of the eighth grade last year, because we wanted to know what was, it was not good. It was around 70%. Um, so we're finding an increase in freshmen coming to school. Eighth grade had an attendance issue. Come to freshmen, and they're like, how are things getting better? How are we getting them to school? Um, there was five. It's not, it's not a program without issues and flaws. There was about, at the end of the year, there were five or six in December that did not want to do mentoring. Their parents called. They were not happy about it. And without guessing, you probably know those are the five that need to be loved the most, right? They're coming from parents. Some of them didn't care if they graduated. Some of them are saying, this is silly. They should be able to pick their friends. But we knew it would help them become connected into the school. Um, but there was about five who, in December, did not like it. Two of them ended up buying in. They stayed. There was no more complaints after Christmas. The other three, sometimes, because it's mandatory, the, pro the consequences you do go to in-school suspension if you don't attend the freshman program. There is a consequence for that. So they ended up having some discipline consequences for not showing. So another thing I looked at was positive incentive. And at Mountain High School, you get points that are contributed to positive incentive. So depending on what grade you got, you got to get a certain percentage for each grade or what your GPA is. And how well you do on the practice, ACT if you're a junior, your CSAD, your freshman, sophomore, whatever level it is, they do practice tests. So what are your scores on that? Did you actually This quarter. So he's already noticed a difference in behavior, disciplinary issues with last year's freshmen this first quarter. Um, the, the, my favorite part, you know, there's a rivalry between Charles and Mattoon, but we were asking, should other programs, it doesn't matter what high school, should they have a mentoring program? And they're like, no, it's ours. Like, don't tell anybody. This is what makes Mattoon special. Like, they didn't want to share the possibility of others having it. Um, <laughs> I think you guys are doing a great job, but I wish we had more days with our mentors. So those are some special ones that just show how impactful you can be for some of the freshmen. What we did in the fall is that they stayed with their mentor the whole lunch period. Well, the traditional lunch day, after you eat, you could go to the gym or you can go to the library. 
So they didn't like that they couldn't go to the gym. And so in January, we changed it. We said, all right, 15 minutes, eat with your mentor, and then you can go to the gym. Go to the library, whatever you want to do. Well, what do you think happened? Over 70% stayed at the table with their mentor after we gave them the opportunity to go to the gym, that they ended up staying. And so it was just telling that, um, that it really did mean a different, makes a difference to stay there. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. They might be... I hope it's not too. You could tell we made these videos, right? I and mean, this is the quality that you get. <laughs> Let's start off by uh, you just telling me about your experience with Bionic. Um, I've had freshmen in my room and their freshman mentoring group, and it's just been really great to see them freshmen coming Jeez. in there. Uh, somebody that you can see in the hall. 
hallway besides your peer that you can say hi to, somebody that you can go to if you have problems, somebody that you can go to to vent. I've seen all those things, though. I've seen mentors bring students out of their shyness. I've seen mentors include students who aren't normally, might not normally be included in social interaction. I've seen mentors nicely and in a friendly way put students in their place, um, which is kind of nice. That's not a teacher that has to do that. And so I think all that Well, this is loading. I'll show you the students design the t-shirt every summer. This is this year's um, part of the training, and this is the one from last year. And so it's the whole idea of buying it in, right? It's the marketing, the slogan, this is their shirt, and all of us try to wear it on Thursdays I during just mentoring. I kids to feel like they belong. I think that's the overall thing that, you know, you're, we want you here. You know, this is, no, we're so glad loud. you're here. Oh, no, it's so loud. I think that's probably the overarching goal of the program for me. You know, it's not really about attendance. It's not really, all those things are nice. Um, but if kids feel like they belong, then all those things are going to fall into place. They can't turn it down. So I was at a conference and a woman introduced the Bionic program. And Bionic stands for Believe It or Not, I Care, which was a mentoring program originating in a high school. And I was inspired and excited about what that might be like at Mentoon High School. I think that young people today need mentors that help them navigate an important transition like high school. The freshman mentoring program involves juniors and seniors who are called mentors and each of them are paired with four or five freshmen and their responsibilities include having lunch with them, meeting with them and doing a little bit of curriculum and basically taking them under their wing and kind of helping them the navigate. We could get those pictures. I think it's really cool because not only am I making four to five new friends but they are also making four to five new friends. You build a relationship um, every day when you come in, it's the little things, it's not one big defining moment, it's all the little things you do. It's the way you treat them, it's the way you talk to them, it's the way you listen. They share experiences, kind of ask questions, um, and also hopefully help influence in a positive way those freshmen. This second team is called the Grief Team. And the grief team was set up in order to help those individuals in the school who've lost someone. The purpose behind that is that when you lose someone in your life, after two days of taking your bereavement leave, you just come back and sort of life just happens as it normally was. And we wanted something different, a different feel for the students and the staff to say that someone really does care and that we notice that you might be hurting or this might be a difficult time for you. We take pies in people's houses if they've had a loss or somebody in their family is hurting. We go there to let them know that we're here for them if they need somebody to talk to and that we care all the way around. It's, it's just an absolute great feeling. I know that I'm doing something that's going to make somebody else's day. It's better than I thought it was going to be. It's better for me, it's better for the school, it's better for the students. Um, and it's an amazing experience for my graduate students. Dr. Larson heard about it and said, yes, I want to do this at Mattoon High School and brought it to Mattoon High School. And it happened. I think sometimes things seem so big. Um, and so I feel like it's taught me that I can dream and not to maybe hold back or think that it's not possible or that I couldn't do it or be a part of something so great. It's been really amazing to be a part of this program and I feel blessed to be a part of it. I feel like it's enriched my experience as a graduate student um, 
and as a school counseling intern, um, and I've really seen it change the school culture, I think, at Mattoon High School. So I think the most important part of the hammock is to make sure that every student, every staff member feels important and that they believe here someone genuinely cares about them. So that's all we have for you. Questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. Do the, the, the mentors, do they get any incentives? Do they get like community service hours or anything like that? They do. They, the juniors get an extra day off campus. Uh, sort of a, a the Wednesday they get to eat off campus since they give their Thursday lunch. Um, they also have, they have a purple, purple cord program and also the NHS, they get some hours for that. But no credit hours, but just some service hours, yeah. And, and the funding, what is that? Boy, it's been an interesting journey. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, pies are expensive. I had no idea how much pies would be. Um, and the pizza party for the transfer. So part of the community has been awesome, right? So getting in with Kiwanis, getting in with the Rotary Club, some of them have made donations. We just had um, recently a freshman parent wants to donate to help in any way that they can because it's made a difference in their son's life. Um, so sometimes it's support, family. We also sell the pies um, at, at Thanksgiving and Easter. Um, and so we have some money. I think we made a thousand bucks off that, so that helps fun. I write grants here at Eastern. We coordinate with um, Matt Toon High School. And we received a couple thousand last year, hoping for that again. Um, but private donations, um, that, that's probably where we get most of it. Yeah. Are you looking to expand to like another school? Matt Toon Middle School? I know. I know it's a great it's a great question. Charleston High School has asked me the same. <laughs> Muhammad. I know. I w I will say you know I'm a mom and I'm a wife and I'm a professor and in my heart it is one of my my best accomplishments. It is an absolutely moving thing to see young people because some young people get the short straw with parents, right? And it's not their fault. They just draw the short. They don't have a great mom. They don't have a great dad. They don't have siblings. They they have you know, uh, socioeconomic status things, bad things happen, right? They have a serious loss. But if you could help people love and care for everybody, it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter where you come from. Um, and so I think schools that want to start this, I think schools where they want to go is to say, can we get enough people in the building that can show love and care about them? And can we get some support? You need some outside support. Um, and graduate programs, I mean, there's more people going to college. Graduate programs have practicums, they have internships, they need to go someplace. And I think it's, it's a phenomenal place to send students to, to learn and to work. Um, Adrienne's working on her PhD this year, and she said, Dr. Larson, when, they, when I tell stories about what I'm going to do for my dissertation and what I'm going to do, when I, they don't really believe me. Because you create hope, you create belief that they could do it. And so I, I don't know. I mean, I would love to. I, I got to get some more people, um, some more time. But this has been, if any of you are willing to try it, it has been absolutely one of the best experiences, for sure. It's been a really good experience. And I don't think it just has to be high school level. It could be middle school. It could be elementary. I think it's just the older students helping the younger students. And the teachers have become more loving. The teachers are giving more than they ever used to give because they're receiving more, right? Sometimes it's the thankless job that a teacher has. And so as that kind of circle of care and comes around, so. Yeah. Great. Any other questions that you have? Thank you. It's, the clock's about five minutes fast, but we are out of time. And thank you for being here today. And um, if you want to come look at any of the products, if you have more questions, we'd be happy to answer. And have a wonderful weekend.